Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. This is Mark Anderson for Kellogg Community College. And buckle up, we're going to do some uniform motion problems using one of our favorite formulas from physical science class, distance equals rate times time. Or in this case, we're going to flip it using the symmetric property and saying rate times time equals distance. Now, uh, we will be doing a lot of one kind of step which is setting up the equation in terms of rate times time equals distance. But then we're going to solve for t. And t, equivalently, in this problem is going to be the distance divided by the rate. This is dividing both sides by r. And you're going to actually see that sometimes the t is going to be the same for both the two objects in question, usually vehicles. And we can set these equations equal to each other and then use our solving for x rules that we learned back in our solving for x rationals chapter to get the problem done. So let's go take a look at our first problem. An express bus travels, and it's good to kind of label what we have here, 455 miles in the same amount of time that a car travels 406 miles. So we're going to use our rate times time equals distance and see what this equation is telling us. An express bus travels 455 miles in the same distance that a car travels 406 miles. So the 455 and the 406 is the distance of each of these. Now it says in the same amount of time. So we're going to use the cursive letter T to represent that. Then it says the rate of the car is 7 miles per hour less than the rate of the bus. So the car is going slower. We would then designate the car as x minus 7 and the bus as x. Now it can be said that you could rewrite this a different way. You could say the bus is plus 7 and the car would be x and that would still denote that the car would be 7 less than the rate of the bus. But this is directly from the equation and most students would write it this way uh, based on their own, uh, left to their own devices. So now what we have is two equations where rate times time equals distance. So we have xt is equal to 455 and then we have x minus 7 times t is equal to 406. Now my suggestion in all of these problems is to write your equation and then solve for t. Get the t by itself. So in this problem up here we have x times t equals 455 so t is equal to 455 divided by x and here if we get the t by itself by dividing both sides by x minus 7 that binomial we get 405, or sorry, 406 divided by x minus 7. Now there's a mathematical property called the transitive property, which says that if two things are equal to each other, then the other parts are also equal. So um, in notation-wise, if a is equal to b and b is equal to c, then a is equal to c. Well, if t is equal to this equation, or the, sorry, this fraction, if t is equal to this fraction and t is equal to this fraction, then the two fractions must be equal to each other. So 455 over x is the same as 406 over x minus 7. This gives us our equation that we can solve using rationals. Now, the way that I would solve this is to multiply both sides by the lowest common denominator. This is also known as cross multiplication but I like to write out both sets as little balloons that we can pop or problems we can simplify and I'll change this to a lighter color so you can see what I'm doing here. I'm going to multiply both sides by x and x minus 7 in the numerator only. And this isn't getting a common denominator, in fact this is multiplying both sides by these so they will simplify with each other like so and like so. What this is going to give us is it's going to give us a problem with no denominators and it's going to give us an x in the numerator to solve. So on this left hand side the 455 is being multiplied by this binomial. So this is going to be uh, 455x minus 7 times 455 or 3185. This 406 gets multiplied by the x so 406x. To solve this problem now I'm going to move the 455 over to the 406. I'll do so with subtraction, which leaves me with the left hand side a negative 3185 and the right hand side with negative 49x. Dividing both sides by negative 49, I get a x equals to positive 50, or sorry, 65. 65 is now my rate for the bus. But notice the problem says find the rate of the car. So x, meaning the bus, 
we would now have to do a little bit of subtraction to figure out the car. 65 minus 7 is going to be the car. So the car is 58. The bus was 65, the car was 58. All right, let's move to the next problem. I'm going to deal with a motorcycle that travels 231 miles. So here's my rate times time equals distance. So 232 miles in the same amount of time a car travels 200. So here's the car traveling 200. It's the same amount of time, so the t stays exactly the same. Now it says the rate of the, motor the, rate of the motorcycle is 8 miles per hour faster than the rate of the car. So the motorcycle is going to be x plus 8, and the car is going to be just x. Now you can see, because I'm still going to find the rate of the car here, you can see that I can set the equation up just like the one up here. By multiplying the two um, r times t together, I've got x plus 8 times t equals 232. And here I have x times t equals 200. Getting the t's by themselves, I'm going to divide both sides of this first equation by x plus 8. So t is equal to 232 divided by x plus 8. And dividing both sides by x here, t is equal to 200 divided by x. Now I get to set these equations equal to each other because they're both equal to t. If t is equal to this fraction and t is equal to this fraction, then the one fraction, 232 divided by x plus 8, is equal to 200 divided by x. Now again, cross multiplication or um, multiplying by both denominators will clear the denominators out of the problem, changing to a different color to show you that. I'm going to multiply this side by x and x plus 8, with the x plus 8 simplifying. And over here, I'm going to multiply by x and x plus 8 and have the x's simplify. So this leaves me with a little bit of distribution to do, but there will be no more denominators, and there will be a numerator with an x in it, or two x's in it, to solve. So 232x is going to be equal to 200 times x, or 200x, plus the um, 200 times 8, which gives me an answer of 1600. If I subtract the 200 from both sides, I get 32x is equal to 1600. If I divide both sides by 36, x is equal to 50. The 50 is now the x, the rate of the car. And we don't need to find the rate of the motorcycle, but in case you wanted to, you could say the motorcycle is 58. But the car is 50, since we asked for the car, and we um, used just the variable x for the car. Two down, three to go. Let's take a look at an express train. This is going to be an odd problem because in this problem, the t's will not be the same. So there might be a little bit of work to do here and a little bit of thought behind this problem, but I want to push you through this and uh, help you out. Um, in this case, it says an express train, so we're going to call this the train. An express train and a car leave a town at 2 p.m and head for a town 300 miles away. What this gives us is the distance of our rate times time equals distance. So they're both 300 in this case, which also, I mean, starts off a little differently, doesn't it? It looks like our distance is 300. So now it says here the rate of the express car, or sorry, the rate of the express train is one and a half times the rate of the car. And that's pretty straightforward. So this would be 1.5x, and this would be x. Now it says here the train arrives two hours ahead of the car. Find the rate of the car. Now this means that our t is not going to be the same in both situations, because the train arrives two hours ahead of the car. So that means the time of the car is going to take longer. Now there are two ways to write this equation. I prefer writing the t plus 2 for the car. And the reason why I prefer that is because I am going to be more successful with addition problems versus subtraction problems. You'll note that I will not have to change the time of the train, because the train is going to arrive two hours ahead of the car. So let's say, for example, the train took four hours, the car would be six hours. So that example shows that I've got this proportion set up, or this, this uh, relationship between t and these two uh, vehicles set up correctly. In, I also could have wrote, wrote t minus 2 and left this a t, 
but it's still I'm going to prefer using the plus two here just because I'll make fewer mistakes in getting that right. So now what I'm about to do is I'm about to solve for t. So here I have for my train equation I have 1.5 x times t is equal to 300. What I'm going to do is divide both sides by 1.5x. So 300 divided by 1.5x. And that's my first equation I'm going to start with. I'm going to put that like this. Now what I'm about to do is work on the second equation. So here I have x times t plus 2 is equal to 300. And again, I'm trying to get the t by itself, so I'll divide both sides by x. So now I have t plus 2 is equal to 300 divided by x. Then what I'm going to do is subtract the 2 from both sides. So t is equal to 300 divided by x minus 2. This is my second equation. My first equation is just moving the 1.5 to the other side. My second equation, I had to move the x and the 2 to the other side. Now, since I have t all by itself, I'm going to set the t's equal to each other, or these fractions equal to each other, and solve in the fractions. So I'm sorry to, that I should have really gave you some more space to write here, but this is going to be the first fraction set equal to the second binomial, like so. What this means is we're going to have to do a little bit of work because in this problem we're going to have an x and a 1.5x as my common denominator. So I'm going to multiply every single fraction by 1.5x and by x. This is going to be a very interesting solution because it's also going to mean that we're going to probably have to do some interesting factoring to solve this problem since we have basically an x and a 1.5x multiplied by each part. That's a 1.5x there and here's an x and a 1.5x. Alright, so here's where things get a little tricky. These x's simplify and leave me with 300x. Alright, these x's simplify here and leave me with 1.5x times 300, which is going to be 450x. Now over here, I've got this negative 2 times x times 1.5x. So if I go negative 2 times x times 1.5x, I get a total of negative 3x squared. So now I have an equation with an x and x and an x squared. Knowing my rules about factoring, if I have an equation with an x and an x squared, I am going to have to solve for x using factoring methods. So I'm going to decide, because I can either bring the 300 over to the right, or I can bring the negative 3 and the 450 to the left, I'm going to decide to bring everything to the left and put it inside of this green box to keep. And I'm going to change colors so you can keep following me on this. So let's take this to red. So if I bring the 3x squared and the 400x over to the left hand side, I now have a positive 3x squared, I now have a negative 450x, and I have a positive 300x equaling 0. I'm going to collect like terms here, so this is 3x squared. I'm going to have a minus 150x, and that's also equal to 0. To use my factoring skills correctly, I'm going to factor out a common term. A common term between 3x squared and negative 150x is 3x. If I factor that out, that leaves me with x minus 50 equals 0 to solve for x. And this gives me my two answers to the problem. Finishing up the problem in this red box over here, if I have 3x equals 0, then x is going to be, if I divide both sides by 3, x is going to be equal to 0. And that's not going to make any sense, is it? Because if I have x equals 0, then these, uh, this basically means the train gets there in 0 time. So this is an excluded val value that didn't make any sense. But the other problem is going to make sense, because if I have x minus 50 equals 0, then I add 50 to both sides, x is equal to 50 which makes sense. My x, which is the rate of my train, is going to be 1.5x, and the rate of the car is going to be 50. So 50 is the speed of the car, and if you were curious as to finding out how fast the train was going, the train was going 1.5 times faster, or 75 miles an hour. So that, my friends, is the answer to the problem, because we set up our x for the speed of the car. 
Let me move back to my other color blue. Boop. Okay, so here we have a plane that's flying with the wind and then against the wind. So it's the same plane and I think I'm gonna draw two arrows to show that this plane is flying with, if you imagine that going with the wind is in that direction, and against is going in this direction. So we're gonna set up our rate times time equals distance. So the f a plane can fly at a rate of 212 miles per hour in calm air. Traveling with the wind, the plane flew 720 miles in the same amount of time that it flew 552 miles against the wind. Find the rate of the wind. So the big question is, is how do I you know, kind of generate this equation? And to generate this equation, I would look at the rate because it can fly 212 miles per hour in calm wind. So flying with the wind, or plus W, the plane will actually go faster. And against the wind, 212 minus W would be against the wind. Now this is the same um, equation or setup if you ever encounter a problem dealing with going against the river or against the stream or going with the stream or river. Um, they will have this setup about the rate. Your, your boat is going to travel at a certain rate and with the current it's going to add the current speed and against the current it's going to be against the current speed. Now like in all the previous problems up above, I'm going to solve for t. And I'm going to take this a little bit faster because in this equation I see that they're multiplied by each other. So if I divide both sides by 212 plus w, I get the equation of 720 divided by 212 plus w. And the other equation here, if I also divide both sides by 212 minus w, I've got 552 divided by 212 minus w. Well, this sets up a great equation for me because I can set both of these equal to each other now. And setting them both equal to each other, I can go um, and do some cool uh, cross multiplication or um, multiplying of the denominators by each other. And I think for this equation, I will do some cross multiplication. Now, please be aware that when you do the cross multiplication, these numbers get exceedingly big because 212 minus W times the 720 gives you an answer of 152,640 minus 720 W is equal to, multiplying by these together, 117,024 plus 212, or sorry, uh, 552 W. So the question becomes is how are we going to solve the problem? Well, I would move the 720 to this side, which would give me a total of 1,272 W, and I would move the 117,024 over to this side, which gives me 35,000 616. So now I have 35,616 divided by 1,272 W. Well, divide both sides by 1,272 and my W, or wind speed, is going to be 28. So the question is, find the rate of the wind. The wind is 28 because I could travel 212 plus 28 miles per hour with the wind and then subtract the 28 from the 212 against the wind. For our final problem today, we're going to look at a passenger train and a freight train. So passenger, I'll just put pass for the passenger train and freight for this one. Put my D times, sorry, my uh, rate times time equals distance. All right, so here we go with the two different problems here. A passenger train travels 650 miles in the same amount of time that a freight train would travel 120 miles. So the t's are the same. The rate of the passenger train is 15 miles per hour faster than the rate of the freight train. x plus 15 and x. Find the rate of each train. Well, just like before, we're going to solve for t and we're going to take a little shortcut since we've been doing these problems um, enough, we can just rewrite our equation, our first equation, with the t by itself and the x plus 15 in the denominator. 
and this other equation here, the t is going to be by itself, and the 120 divided by x is going to be there. Since these are both equal to each other, we'll set them equal to each other. So 165 over x plus 15 is equal to 120 over x. And since there's only one fraction each here, we can cross multiply or multiply both sides by x over x plus 5. You'll note that problem number 8 could not be done this way. Since we had three terms, you could not actually have done cross multiplication. But here we could, but I still am going to go through the technique of multiplying both sides by x and x plus 5. The 120 times x plus 5 gives me 120x plus 1800. If we subtract the 120 from both sides, we get an answer of 45x, and the 1800 gets divided by 45, which gives me an answer of x is equal to 40. Please make sure that you're solving the right part of the problem, because it says find the rate of each train. So what we just found was the freight train. Therefore, the passenger train would be 15 faster, so the passenger train is equal to uh, 55 miles an hour. I wrote 15. Sorry about the 15 there. Uh, it's 15 more than the 40, so 40 plus 15 is 55. Thank you for watching today. These have been some challenging problems, and again, uh, see me in class if you have questions or shoot me an email. Thank you very much.